can't win it. <laughs> G'day all. Quick story for you, bit of a bizarre one. I've always been a creative writer and I've always been a bit of a theatrical storyteller. And I even have a background in formal academic writing. But several months ago, while we're on this great trip around Australia, lapping Oz for our second lap, we noticed an article in the Wanderer magazine. Now, the Wanderer is a camping and traveling journal that's published once a month by the CMCA, the Camper Van and Motorhoming Club of Australia. It's a great piece of literature. If you join the CMCA, you can, you can get on board that one. Anyway, they were advertising for any family that was currently traveling Australia to basically submit their story for the following month's publication. So I thought to myself, well, I'm a content creator, I'm a YouTuber, I'm a vlogger, and let's face it, we're pretty seasoned travelers by now. So I thought, why not? So over the course of a few nights, I began writing an article which was, was intended for the Wanderer magazine about our travels from the very start, from the concept to where we were at that time, several months ago. So I put pen to paper, as I said, took me a, a few nights and then sent it in and just forgot about it. Now, although this was written by me as a freelance writing piece, it was totally voluntary and it was unpaid. And they were simply just asking for people to write about their traveling experiences. Several weeks later, we were alerted by friends that not only had they used the piece of writing I'd given them with the accompanying photos, <laughs> they'd actually put us on the front cover of the August edition, 2023. That's us at Cooper Pedy. Was totally blown away. I didn't anticipate they were even going to use it, let alone put us on the front cover. And lo and behold, there we were as a major piece in this in the uh, eight page story in the center of the magazine and as a result what a wonderful opportunity it was to be approached by another camping and traveling media platform where i've done freelance writing for them also but anyway i'll read you this magazine article that i wrote for them wasn't going to it's been several months but i thought i would anyway it's a wonderful magazine and all the journalists and all the crew at the wanderer australia so I'll read it to you and look, maybe it might inspire you to get out there yourself and have a crack and tour this wonderful country. See you later. Picture this, it's 2020, where a regular family from Sydney had just been on what was possibly the final tour through the EMU Plains Avita RV factory before New South Wales entered another COVID lockdown. We loved the concept of a motorhome and had an insatiable thirst for some real Australian adventure. We purchased an early Avita built Winnebago motorhome just as a weekender and this morphed into an unplanned all-in family restoration project. After a deep family discussion we thought if we are going to do this then let's really do this. You only get one life so let's not waste it. We removed both our daughters then 7 and 13 from their respective schools and we hit the road full time for one year. What unfolded was life changing. Isn't it strange where some roads in life take you? We had no idea that what we were about to embark on would actually ruin our life, but in a good way. We had heard that the hardest part of doing the lap of Australia was making the decision to do it. It is true, that initial step really feels like a big leap of faith. We filmed our travels along the way and published them on YouTube, 
so our family back home could be with us, plus anybody else who was interested. We initially thought, what content could we possibly offer in our videos? After all, we didn't have the latest equipment, we didn't do extreme off-roading, we don't have an off-road caravan, we don't fish, we don't own a boat or have a dog. <laughs> Hold it up. Good girl. Hold it up. Up. And we definitely aren't trying to sell anything on YouTube. Looking back at it all now, that was exactly the point. We were very different from the usual travelling crowd. We had a cat, an old vintage motorhome, older kids, and we had absolutely no direction whatsoever. Just hopes, dreams, and a ton of tenacity. But we captured something. We did the lap with very little, and we did it with soul. My childhood hero was Albie Mangles. What a legend. If I could identify with any past adventurer, hands down, it will be Albie. He was a guy with very primitive equipment, no formal survival training and no military background. He came from a time before V8 Saharas, coffee machines and lithium batteries. What he did have though was an overwhelming sense of adventure. So did we. Our family yearned to break bread with the real travelling community and to see the real Australia. You don't realise how great barbecues can be in the middle of absolutely nowhere. Or how nice cold beer can taste in a heatwave in the red dust. How star-filled the rural night skies become. And how great Australian music really is. Or how nice a meal that was cooked on a fire can taste as you share your most personal life stories with someone you just met an hour ago. You will never be without help with a flat tyre and you will forge the most unique friendships out there with the most salt of the earth people. I'm certain we'll end up being friends for life with most of them. Of all the travellers we met, we were all on the same path. Happiness, serenity, and just appreciating simplicity are something to intrinsically cherish. Upon arriving home in early 2022, our lap around Australia was over. I knew we would never be the same. Looking back, it's like life stopped for us the moment we were off the road. But I felt that one day, the road will be part of our lives again. Those world-class secluded beaches without a soul in sight. The red outback dust that drove us insane. And that northern Queensland humidity. The wet Sundays, white sand between our toes. The elusiveness of Tasmania's west coast and the beauty of Victoria's high country. I'll never forget seeing sunsets on those rugged mountains, hiking through the rolling valleys into the wilderness, people watching in those tiny country towns, and of course, us. To travel around Australia and reconnect as a family is a gift. This wasn't just about being another traveller. This was truly about reconnecting as a husband and a wife and a father and mother. A situation only able to be cultivated in a motorhome on the road together for 12 months. We learnt so much that year, not just about how diverse Australia is, but about our own children about each other and about ourselves. 
we never questioned or undervalued the concept of homeschooling our girls on the road, as opposed to formal classroom education. I saw three years of growth in those girls during our lap. We have had some tough times out there, but I'm immeasurably proud of how much resilience our family has developed and the self-sufficiency I've seen in our daughters. I just can't wait to see how our adventures shape their future. It's definitely been the best thing I have ever done for their developmental years. We met so many other families travelling, going to incredible lengths to get a taste of the nomadic family lifestyle. We have seen entire families sleeping in tents just so they can reconnect with their children. Early 2023, we once again did what we knew was absolutely right for us as a family. We resigned from our Sydney jobs, took Jess, now 15, and Chloe, now nine, out of school, rented out our home, and left their old lies for dust. Unfinished business awaited us, as Australia is a gift to us all and it absolutely must be explored. It felt wrong not to see it all, and I must admit, I shed a tear or two when my family agreed to return to life on the road, into the red dust of the outback and beyond, for one more time. But our toughest challenges awaited us this time. Tackling Cooper Pedy, the Simpson Desert, up to the Capricorn Coast, the tip of Cape York, and across to the Gulf of Carpentaria. Places we never thought we'd ever see. Then to the Northern Territory, down through Western Australia, and across the formidable Nullarbor Plain once again. Prior to hitting the road this year, we became proud ambassadors of Avida RV Motorhomes and Caravans, the largest and oldest motorhome manufacturer in Australia today. We have always loved the motorhome lifestyle, so it was with such irony to be invited into the Avida family the same family who built our motorhome 30 years ago. I must say, for a company that is arguably at the top tier in their industry, they are a wonderful family right to the core. A quality that certainly flows through to their final products. I often get asked if being a traveller is as good as what is depicted on social media. My personal answer is an immediate yes. Absolutely it is, and it's not to be missed. For us, money will return, but our time won't. And we may never experience traveling around Australia in a motorhome as a family again. People also ask us what our favorite part of Australia is. I always reply with, Australia. I honestly believe that we live in the best country in the world for motorhoming. Occasionally, someone will challenge me on that and ask me if I've ever travelled across every country in the world to make that comment. Well, the answer is obviously no, but what I do know is that there is nothing quite as unique as Australia, particularly the outback. There's just no other place in the world quite like it.